My sister had uh, been on drugs for the most of her senior year of high school, and she had managed to get away from the drugs by um, joining a church that was in the town, that we, uh, town next door to the one we grew up in. My sister invited me to a youth group outing. The youth group outing was, well, in, uh, in early January in uh, eastern Washington, where we had about, oh, about a foot of snow that year. And so they were out on one of the hills uh, intertubing. Normally the group that I intertubed with, we had a keg of beer at the top of the hill, and we'd go and fight and everything else that goes along with that while, while you're tubing and running over each other. And I took this guy out that was just, I, it was a great takeout. The problem is, is uh, this guy, Mike, um, was bigger than Nathan Smith across the shoulders and taller than Tim. Just huge. And he came down the hill and I thought I was going to get my clock cleaned. But he just reached down and says, hey, are you okay? From that point on, I was kind of looking at this group wondering, what is going on with this group? So guys in the youth group that are out having fun at an outing, continue to do that, please. It could be somebody like me that comes along as a guest to somebody else and has a life-changing experience. I had a heck, of a heck of a time for the next week trying to figure out what was going on in my head. And for uh, the first time in my life, alcohol wasn't working. I mean, I couldn't get drunk. I had to make a decision at that point, and I uh, chose to follow Christ and give up drinking at the same time. Um, that made it easy but hard. I kind of had to decide to not drink. And for a long time that worked for me. Um, I found that Alcoholics Anonymous uh, fairly late and found that a lot of the stuff that I'd done was right, but I did it the hard way. Of course I did it my way, but each to his own. If you have a problem, get help for it. Don't try and do it on your own. Recording. Well, seriously, this, this kid was like cussing in kindergarten. I mean, <laughs> I mean, like you know, cussing's a big thing in kindergarten. And I don't know, like, like this kid, like me and him were best friends at eight, either way. I don't know why we were, because you know, like me and him were like polar opposites. But yeah, so like, like going through, and like this kid slowly like starting to get weirder and weirder, and like, and now you know he, um, he's gotten held back and expelled from a couple schools, and so. Um, yeah, and so like, and now he, he's obviously into drugs. I think he was into drugs, I think, um, I've got to say like sixth grade or something like that, something really early. And yeah, and that's been my experience with drugs. And I just, you know, so, slowly saw him like deform, or was that even a word for it? I don't know, but that, and so, yeah. I don't know, I mean, like, it sounds kind of like goody-goody, but I mean, like, I don't really, you know, like, I, I see myself going somewhere and I, I, I I want to experience, you know, wherever I go. Like, I, I want to live a full life. And, you know, like, if by getting a pleasure now is going to, like, stop, you know, like, my maybe a bigger pleasure in the future, I really do not want to do that. I don't know. I mean, like, it's just, I don't know. Like, I, you know, like, in movies, you know, I, I watch movies, and, like, there, there's this guy, you know, like, I mean, you know, like, he's such, you know, like, I watched, uh, see, like, James Bond last night. I mean, random, random guy, but, you know, like, like, he probably had a childhood, and, you know, and, it, and, at, and now, like, you know, he's a fictional character, but now, you know, now these, in his older years, he used to have, like, this bigger experience, because, you know, he's a secret agent, and, you know, like, like as a little kid, you know, probably went through the same school, all kind of stuff, but, you know, like, like, he's a secret agent now, so, like, his life's so much bigger than it was back here, and so, you know, like, really, your, your horizon expands so much more once you get past a certain age, that you, is not even anywhere near what you're when you're in like grade school. And they do random drug testing on secret agents. Oh, yeah. So that would totally take that out for you. Yeah. Totally. So my story with drugs would have to start with my siblings. Um, I have four adopted siblings. They're all six and under, down to two. <laughs> 
and um, their mom was a prostitute, and she is addicted to drugs. Um, and because she was addicted to drugs when she got pregnant with them, they were all born addicted to drugs, so they go through the same things that everyone else who takes drugs goes through, except that they don't have the the means to like get drugs. Um, so they are going through withdrawal. So um, when they're babies, it's really hard because they do a lot of shaking and a lot of crying, and they just don't really know what's going on because they crave the drugs in their body, but they can't get it. They also had a lot of brain issues, so just they're all in special ed classes and they've had to go through various therapies their whole um, as they've been growing up because they can't they have trouble speaking or trouble understanding things and it's different when you see it happening with your friends or with someone that's older because um, you know it's a decision they've made and they kind of have to go through that to and it's it's really hard for me to go through that because I it, I don't want to watch them go through that kind of pain and so it really has made me realize that that's just yeah. not something I want to do because I, I don't want anyone to have to go through that and I don't want myself to have to go through that and I don't want to affect um, a child's life if I have a child when I was on drugs or whatever so and I don't I don't think that their mom even realizes that she's affecting them because, well, I know she's really messed up because she's on drugs, um, but I, I don't think it really occurred to her that when she started doing them and when she started having kids that it was really going to affect them like it is. I don't think she still even understands. I think that she would have to live with us and take care of the kids to understand fully what it, what it has done to them. Yeah. I shared my story with um, Black posted a bulletin on MySpace and shared a story, this story, and um, I had a couple of my friends who are really hardcore into drugs that told me that they never knew about that and it was a total new perspective on it. And Yeah, I had conversations with them. Um, a lot of them just really didn't know what to say. They're just like, I never knew that, I never knew that side of it, what it could do. So I thought that was really cool because it just, like going back to the whole what you do affects other people, it can happen in a good way too. So it made me see that just writing down my thoughts made it affected other people in a good way. Hi, right, I'm Jonathan Hunter. I'm Jeff's brother and I'm a firefighter. And he wanted me to tell you a story about being drunk and doing dumb stuff. So, went on a call, we had a lady who was hanging out with her ex-husband, they both drank copious amounts of hard alcohol. Uh, we got called to a man down, and uh, we got told on our way to the scene that a lady had taken a power drill to a guy's chest. So we show up on scene, the, the lady had taken a power drill and in between ribs got into his chest cavity. He was already transported, so we were taking the lady into the hospital. So we show up and the cops are like, all right, she's in our car, come get her. So I walk up to the car to get her out and um, go to open the door and this lady looks at me who has got a cut like this across her forehead. She'd been banging her head on the plexiglass divider. So her face was all covered in blood. And the whole time we were getting her out, uh, we had a restraint of the cot, so she was all functified on the cot, strapped down. And we transported her to the hospital, the whole time cussing us out, covered in blood. Um, so, don't do drugs and don't drink. <laughs> <laughs>